But like I mentioned to you guys earlier on, I really have an interesting and amazing guest with us today who has been through everything you could think of. Now, for everyone at home or whatever you're watching us from, I'd like you to imagine tonight that you are sleeping uh, after this broadcast and you just want to rest because you've had a really crazy day. And as you do so, I want you to also imagine waking up to a sensational pain on your face and immediately you know that something has happened. You've been burnt by acid. As you wake up to try and go get help, you then get electrocuted because the floor you're standing on um, is basically a live wire. That's what it is. Now, for this gentleman, he doesn't have to imagine that because the sad reality is that it happened to him. This is Dan Xie Xie, who is an acid burn survivor. But before we get to the moment where this happened to him, I want us to go way back to this moment where we are today. Dan, how are you? I'm fine. I'd just like us to start by, obviously, uh, Kenyans want to know who you are, your full names, where do you come from, who is Dan? Okay, as you have been told, my name is Dan Shisha Matakaya. Uh, I'm a police officer, currently attached to Interstellar Police Station. I'm also an acid burn survivor, mm -hmm. and appear I'm visually impaired, blind. Mm. And this uh, is a result of the of the yes the attack, yeah? of the attack. Yeah. Now, let's go way back to before that fateful early morning, you know, late night, early morning, and this attack was meted upon you by your then wife, yeah? Yes. Okay, I'll just ask you to just hold the microphone a bit higher like that, yeah, so that all of Kenya can hear you. So, it was m meted upon you by your then wife. Yes. Let us begin this conversation with the relationship that you had with her leading up to that moment, from the day that you met her, you know, what is it about her that you loved so much, and you decided this one was the one. Uh, okay, uh, this happened in, this was in 20, 2009, eh? mm -hmm. you know, I, I, when I joined the police, after the training from the Kenya Police College Kiganja, I was posted in Empu, uh, nikafanya job, mm -hmm. then nikaona, okay, na izanza familia. I met this young, beautiful, humble lady. Na tuka pendana. Tuka for, for some time. Then nikaona, you know the nature of our work. Mm -hmm. At least to settle mapema yes. is a plus. Eh? Yes. Uh, tuka juana, tuka juana sana, nika mjua, nika mjua. Mm -hmm. Then tuka ingia kwa ndoa. Ah, before ta you ndoa, mm -hmm. what is it about her that you penda? Okay, uh, she was humble. She was intelligent. Mm -hmm. Alafu, she was so supportive. Yeah, yeah halikuwa supportive sana. Mm -hmm. uh, she used to support me a lot. Mm -hmm. To encourage me. Yes. Uh, like, yani, ya halikuwa kila kitu. Yani, halikuwa like, anasimama na mimi. Ile, ile support, ile emotional support. She was there for, you. She was there for me. And um, your family obviously knew her. Tell us a bit about your... Your, your immediate family, your, your, your siblings, and, and who are they? Okay, me, we are nine siblings. Mm -hmm. I'm the fifth born. Mm -hmm. uh, we, they, we have two, have two sisters, mm -hmm. and we are seven guys. Both my parents are still alive. Now, what that I, I know they are watching. Uh, to melelewa in an average family, yeah. to mefunzoa. Yani prayers, you know, a Christian family whereby mefunza kubomba kila kitu is through prayers. Alafu pia uh, tu mefunza, yani how to live your life. Kuwa ishi maisha yako. Then whatever you want, you work for whatever you want, you want in your life. And, and speaking of relationships, even relationships is work. Yes. It's all about making it work. Yes. Uh, you, you then met your lovely, you know, this lovely lady, also uh, a colleague. And now you've fallen in love with her, her sure. humility. And now you're living together. 
uh, you know, sort of customarily ma married. Yes. And how was how was it being married to? How was it living with her? Okay, first she was in a colleague. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So to lika my shamzuri sana yandoa. We used to do all those things in Yonafkiria. Yeah. Mutu anezafanya. As in, like, sometimes we used to do crazy things. Wakatigine we go out together. Tunayendata kuwachi ball. Unawana? A football team. Gani football, man you. <laughs> <laughs> so we are always together. Yes. Kama siko job, tuko pamoja. Yes. We, go, we, are, we used to go out for like... Kila Sunday we go out for dinner, yes. tunakani tu, tunaongea tu, mm. how we want our, our future, our life to be. Yes. Yeah. And then now you began a future with her. Yes, and uh, you began Did it there. include a, a child? Did you guys have a child together? Yes. Uh, tuli patam toto. This was in 2012, mm -hmm. October. Mm -hmm. uh, but to kampoteza the following year, 2013 in May. 2013 in May. Yeah, due to... He had a severe pneumonia. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I know 2013 is also when the attack happened. Yes. Uh, do you feel like the death of the child is when uh, sort of things started to go down south? Or, 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 or did she ever change in your eyes? Okay. Some events that happened after the, we had lost our kid. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, two weeks after the, we had buried him. Yes. Alikuja mm -hmm. uh, she has been advised mm -hmm. in a far to patem toto yes. so that his memories like mto, like mtoto, uh -huh. maybe they can go away. Yes. But okay, uh, I told her uh ni idea mzuri, decision mzuri, but uh, you know we are family yes. and we need to sit down and make our decisions. Uh -huh. But at the moment some decisions are coming from other quarters yes and come be let's be patient because uh tuki 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 fatahizo nini tuki by end of those uh ideas mm -hmm. itakuwa like someone is trying to intrude into our personal life mm -hmm. and influencing the decisions that we are making and and was that something she heeded to yeah oh yes we discussed and took a settle to we uh -huh. can give it a weight so yes. that it's gonna kind of come to an influence and what we are doing so you according to you mna drum we agree and yes we on. agreed we agreed and and did anything happen did you did you did, did that change even after mome agree as a, as a unit as a family unit no okay to liendele amaisha mzuri yes she used to she at that time she 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 was staying in akuru uh -huh. Alikuwa na saidi anduko yake kuran business. Uh -huh. So, me, I was in Kisi. Yes. So, we used to, she used to visit me. Uh -huh. You weekend, anakudia. The yeah. following weekend, me naenda. Yeah. Yasin, tunakutana hivo. Then, this time, this is September. She came, uh, kaka, weeks. After two weeks, eh? Mm -hmm. After two weeks, she told me, ataka kubeba hizo items za mtoto. Mm -hmm. Naona, tulikuwa kwa nyumba. Yes. Nikamwambia why you know nili nikashanga yeah. uh, what is happening mm -hmm. so nikamuliza mbona nataka kuzibeba ah uh, akakimia mm -hmm. she was akanyamaza mm -hmm. so ni wakati niliona okay aeleze like we are tunakuwa role over the issue ah uh, nikamwa uh, wacha nitoke i call nipigie mamake mm -hmm. So ni kampigia, tukaongea, yeah. then she called her. Kamambia, aende nyumbani. Yes. They, they discuss over the, the issue. At least Elze kuna nini. And then she came back and, 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 and this attack happened. Okay, before, yes. before, the day she was supposed to leave. Yes. That was on 21st September. Uh-huh. Hiyo siku nilingia kwa nyumba around 5.30 in the morning. Uh-huh. Since nilikuwa job usiku, Na nilikuwa nimechoka, nikaenda kulala. So that's when she woke up, na kanimagia iyo acid, and she ran away. So I just, I just want us to, to, to go back to that night. Mm -hmm. And I know it's not easy for, for you. It's, it's something obviously we have never experienced. Yes. Just take us back to that night. What happened? How did you feel? It, 
does that memory the, the way you felt bado ni kitu una feel mpaka leo inakusumbua because this is six years ago and the effects are seen are seen till today but tell us about that night what happened that night after the incident on the day even just okay. as it was as it happened that day yes eh uh, before tani and the job you know i was on duty mm-hmm. yeah usiku mm-hmm. so before niende tuliongea mm-hmm. uh, nikaona response zake mm-hmm. nikaona some like like mtu wani ile mtu ame change yani yeah. see at the ni mtu una, unamjua yeah. yeah and you know she used to be a quiet person mm-hmm. uh, at some time mtu anakuwa so jovial yeah. but saa unaona ah what is happening something has changed yeah mm-hmm. ah. Mi sawa nilikuwa naenda job yeah. ah mi I left nikaenda nikamwambia mi mi nimeenda job yes. you know na nikiwa job pia i called her sometimes juu unapiga simu na mwambie ah tuko job tuko huku tuko mm. hapa mm. yeah that's what at least hizo ndio zilikuwa events za hiyo siku za hiyo siku yes and you woke up with a burning sensation on your face yes and immediately ulitaka kwenda utafute at least usaidizi Yes. Niliposhuka kitanda nilifanyika. So hapa sasa hii wakati amenimwagia mm-hmm. mimi hata sasa hiyo sioni. Mm-hmm. Sababu nilikuwa nimelala akanimwagia. Kuna giza pia. Nili, niliamka na hiyo na hizo bands. Mm-hmm. So mimi kusema kukanya kutoka kwa kitanda mm-hmm. niseme le, le, niangalie maji. Yes. At least ni, ni tulize ni poeshi hiyo makali hizo yes. bands. Yes. Kukanyaga kwa flow I felt a shock. Mm-hmm. Eh kufeel shock na already i'm confused yeah. nika scream yeah. so i had just to scream yeah. for rescue yeah. so my colleagues came and wakanishika then i was rushed to to the hospital sure. yeah there's been I've, i've read a lot of stuff online yes. and um, i don't want to sound sensational yeah but then in a, in a setting as yours where it, you're obviously in a relationship yeah and there's nothing anyone can do that we can say it's okay for this kind of punishment to be meted upon you hata kama uliko umefanya nini hakuna mtu ambaye anaruhusu akukutendea kitendo kama hicho it's true it's true but i want to ask you and because i've not i just need kenyans to know today yeah. why are you cheating on your wife no i wasn't do you feel that based on probably something that you've heard or reports Uh, that you've had that we cannot verify but do you feel that maybe your wife and someone she was having an affair with were doing this to harm you so that she could continue with her life with someone else um, uh, okay that one i can't explain eh? yeah. how do you how do you feel thinking about your your wife like when you wake up every morning and you probably have you know you you remind you have memories of how the memories of your of your of the child that you lost do you think good things about her do you miss her do you uh, you know uh, that year to me mm-hmm. it was like a uh, double strategy mm-hmm. because losing a, a kid mm-hmm asemia ndio hii incident inafanyika mm. you see okay we you know we are, we had good moments mm-hmm. with my wife mm-hmm. All, uh, always always mm-hmm. like wakati pia umekosa unaona unakosea anakuambia no i see hivi as in you know that support ile mm-hmm. ni vitu pia unaweza kumbuka but you know life will change and you never know you something you never predict you don't know you don't know the future yeah yeah and um i know that there's a court case on going and obviously we cannot discuss the details of the court case yes have you forgiven your have you forgiven her yes i've forgiven her yeah i forgave her and i told her nimeku nimekusamea mm. na nimekuachia mungu but now the case yes itaendelea itaendelea yeah. as now you appear ni ya serikali yeah, kwa yeah, mwasi, yeah, yes yes ya judiciary na serikali yeah, yes, kwa mwa yes. um, and i know that this also led you to being are you partially blind or are you blind no i'm totally blind totally blind yes but then i also know that you're you are very resilient man and yes. i know you even use your phone 
you can go to Twitter, you go to Instagram or Facebook. I, yes, I, I, yes. I'd like actually Kenyans to, to see how, I don't you have your phone here with you? Yes, I have my phone. I'd like people to see how you're actually able to use your phone mm. uh, even though you're blind. Okay. Oh, you actually put in the, the passcode, yeah? Yes. Let's, let's just put it to the front here. So we can... Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. 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 Yeah. So, so are you able to call and text and I can do I take IP kila, Okay, na izafanya kila kitu uh -huh. na isimu. Ile kitu wewe unaizafanya you can na do. simu I yeah. can do. Done. I, that is just one of the things that technology can afford you. But within you there there is a power and a strength that allows you to be able to even just even want to learn or even want to be able to use the phone. Dan, what keeps you going? This is, I think it's, it's true when they say that Mungu anakupa kile ambacho uneza ukakista himili. Sababu, Dan, I think there are so many of us, and especially men, who would not be able to have the, the resilience that you have. We, we show that we are strong, but this is not easy. What makes you wake up every morning with a joyful heart, go to work, keep going on and on, forgiving someone who's hurt you so badly, and keep living and loving and, and living life. What keeps you go, going down? Okay, you know, initially, yeah. even when I was in the hospital, mm -hmm. uh, the moment I was told that Dan, out of honor, yes. you know, that was a, a very devastating statement mm -hmm. from the doctor yes. to me because I wasn't expecting that. In the hospital, I was just praying that maybe my sight will be restored, mm. you know. Uh, but kuambia hivyo that hiyo ndio ilikuwa gumu kabisa for me uh, i remember i had some suicidal thoughts niki hospitali mm. nikaona labda sasa maisha yezi endelea maisha yani imefika mwisho but there is there was a turning point eh, for me kuna mgonjwa tulikuwa na yeye na yeye ndiye alikuwa ananisaidia you know mm. i was in the hospital so you mm. mm. so Umugonjwa kiliambia, Dan, I wish ningekuwa wewe. Wow. Hey, sayo mina jifikiria, how I can naeza jimaliza, mkina mm. niambia na wish. Mm. So, nika kachini. I, nika, nika, nika anza kujifikiria, reflecting, reconciling myself. So, nika wana, I still have something that is worth, you know. Living for. Yeah, living for. Awesome. Wow, well, we are going to go on a short commercial break. Remember to keep the conversation going on social media, hashtag hey Anto. If you have any burning question or probably you want to just show Dan laugh today, make sure you do so using the hashtag. When we come back, we're also going to meet digital humanitarian Philip Ogola, who's going to gonna delve into social media and how to use the power of social media to help uh, amazing uh, people like Dan. See you after the break. Mm, and we are back. Welcome back to the trend. We are talking to Dan Sheshe, and uh, right now we have someone who I really, really respect. He plays a huge role on social media and informing and just affirming that we can use social media as a powerful tool to change lives. I'm talking about none other than Philip Ogola, digital humanitarian. Welcome. Uh, thank you. I know that you played a very huge role in ensuring that Dan received the support and the help that he, he had. Uh, take us back to the f moment that you got to know about Dan and how that journey has been, even trying to get him funds to be able to get treatment. Um, I first met Dan uh, last year during the, the fire safety week. Uh, he was one of the, the people, who, he was one of the, the survivors who were giving testimony. Yes. And from then, since then, we actually became friends. We share meals, I go to his place. Mm -hmm. 
So he, he reached out to me uh, like, a, uh, uh, like a month ago. Yes. It was like a, he's got this surgery in the US, mm -hmm. but now he can't go because he doesn't have a guide. I mean, I didn't have funds for, for his guide because, mm -hmm. you know, yes, his medical bills were all paid for. And he's tried like raising funds from families, yes, but yes. He, he couldn't raise the, the, yes. the money needed. Yeah. So that's now when I, I said actually we go online and just uh, tell his story. Because uh, I knocked so many doors and uh, just started, okay, let's use social media. Yeah, that said, if you, if you know, do you feel like we need, <laughs> we need to have a bit more empathy? <laughs> like, do, um, do we care as Kenyans? Do we, do we actually care? Um, I think Kenyans, we have, um, we have this observer effect where we just stay, stay look, uh, as in we assume someone else will actually do it, mm. but no one actually does it. As digital humanitarian, we receive like 10 appeals of blood every day. Guys are like, uh, please get us blood. I'm like, I don't work for the blood bank. But guys are like, okay, but you can get. So how many guys go and, uh, like I can do an, uh, an appeal online of, of blood. Mm. I can get like a thousand retweets, mm. but no one goes donate. Yeah. So we are quick to share content, but no one, uh, takes that ownership actually go do something. So me with Dan, I decided actually to do something because social media is a powerful tool, which yes. Kenyans, we've not learned to actually use it. Mm. As a country, we use social media to bully each other, to correct assassinate each other, talk about silly things. Social media is a powerful tool to actually change narratives, mm. to champion social good issues. Mm -hmm. Someone like Dan here, Dan is amazing. He really challenged me. He can use his phone, he can navigate his house, yes. he can use his laptop. Wow. As in his life, is, that's, that's one thing which really inspired me. I was like, let me use the digital space to actually help him. And as Kenyans, do we know the power we have on social media? Social media unites us. It cuts across cultures and, um, and even spheres. Young and old, we can use the same platform to actually yeah, champion issues, like even uh, social good issues. Mm. So me, I tell everyone who is watching today, you can use social media from, I mean, from the comfort of your house to actually save someone's life. And like, what about the men? Because we're dealing with, a, with an, an issue here that involves a man. What about the men who keep quiet they go through probably domestic violence, gender-based violence at home, and they don't talk about it because I'm a man. And a lot of us men also have a very bold voice online, which means that when something is happening to someone else, we probably will even troll it or make fun of it, and we're going through the same thing. How do you challenge these guys to speak out? Um, I always say that uh, it's all fun and games until it happens close at home. Mm -hmm. And um, I've, I've been a big victim of being trolled online. Uh, when I went public about my mental issues, mm -hmm. I, I, I'm battling PTSD. And uh, through, th through support from my friends, my peers, I actually managed to actually get, get through it. But to find online, um, when men come out to speak, they actually uh, laughed at. Kenya, we have this culture of So it's time we know that it's okay not to be okay. Yeah. And, and, uh, one thing which inspired me about Dan is we've done so many uh, interventions with him where men were battling depression, men were suicidal. We've mm. actually, uh, he's come to my place at three in the morning wow. to actually go rescue someone who actually was uh, attempting uh, suicide. Wow. So it, it shows how at times when you see someone posting stuff online, don't mm. laugh at him. People, mm. are, when you see someone posting about suicidal mm. things on social media, mm. I have to That's it, Dan. Yes. Um, obviously, a lot of people who reach a point of one take their life one of the biggest issues and the biggest precursors to that is stigma yeah how have been a, been able to deal with the stigma with either friends and family leaving you um not getting the support you want umedilajina your stigma okay uh, stigma and kitumbaya mm -hmm. and is stigma is worse than even the ile actual the incident itself because uh, after ume malizana like for me when I was discharged, eh, even from even when I was still in the hospital, mm. there is those friends, wale to look close friends, eh, mm. they were like desert. So they feel like ah, this is now we only liability, you know. Mm. And na yon ni wakatu ntakatu watam tu umo akuangeleshi, and you feel like badom kona e. So stigma, the way I handle to me the way I overcame stigma, it was so. Easy. When I went to when I went for my rehabilitation, yes, uh, and those those guys who are visually visually impaired, yes, so only be done. So long as you don't see that we are mutuan labda na point labda someone who is staring at you, achana na iskumize, just leave it. We una you love yourself. You know you are. 
your potential you know your limitations yes. so you know your weaknesses it's better you work to ku, ku make your life better because the moment utaanza kuwa stress na uh, what those people are saying or what they are do, what they are doing mm. ama ile kitu wanafanya nyuma yako itakuwa affect na it affect them so it's better we well, move on with your life yeah. then the counseling pill is a idea yes. to overcome the your stigma, the stigma. Yes. So, speaking of uh, moving on with life if you know i know also a while back on social media there's time you were actually seeking uh, funds for a medical issue that you had how was that journey for you and, and how are you now uh, from a health, a health perspective um uh, i think I'm, i I've, i've sprung back and um one thing which gives me energy is to actually help others and yeah. um I was diagnosed with a condition uh, with my therapist that I am I'm a truist like I'm mother, like mother Teresa so I, I actually help people so I'm 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 actually a humanitarian I can't stop doing it if I stop it I actually sink back into depression so I have to keep doing what I'm doing health was I'm good um, I'm much better right now though I'm still battling uh, once in a while I I I, 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 I slump back into mental issues mm. but my health is is, is is much better right now it's, yeah, yeah it's speaking better. of moving on now I'd like us to talk about what next Philo what next Dan I'm going to start with uh, Philo what next now and, and I think you guys have also closed the fans appeal yeah. and we here at, at at NTV and at the trend we hope that everything does go well for you guys um in, in the states but what next what what is the next conversation after this um I think what we're going to focus more with me and Dan is from moving on when he comes back from from treatment where we really want to give men a space to actually talk about issues because mm-hmm. I, i feel that as a society we don't give men space mm. we judge we, we stigmatize men we laugh at them mm. so it's time we will create we're creating space to just have a chat with men and just inspire them that hey don't go through this alone at yeah. times just speaking up at times when i'm down i talk to him when he's down yes. we talk together and, and we actually give us give each other strength so moving forward me and dan uh, dan as a foundation and I'll, i'll actually help him in terms of just moving things to the nurse and boss actually make things go wow dan sasa after hapa and hopefully uh, with surgery but even tukia ka surgery kando what plans do you have for uh, for for kenyans in general for africa for the boy child uh, unapanga nini unapanga gani mapia okay you know when i was in the hospital mm-hmm. i came across many people more more so men when you look who had been abused eh? yeah and they were suffering when yani, they give up mm-hmm. they just give up in life na wengine hata wana wanakufa so i thought that i felt a conviction that maybe through the experience through the pain that me pitia i can change the, the the whole situation you know wow. just to and, you, and you're going to have a foundation right yes yes uh-huh. so uh, i just wanted to have a platform whereby yes. i can neza ongelesha those men mm. to come out and share their stories because i i understand kuna wanaume wengi many men are going through issues yes. at home yes though wengi wanakuwa abused eh? Mm-hmm. but now they are so silent they suffer in silence na hizo vitu ndio zina zina accumulate in their minds wanakuwa depressed wengi they are, they commit suicide and shida si hata ni hao because mm-hmm. the society pia tumewatenga mm-hmm. we are not ready to listen to this men yeah. when they are going through these issues even the friends they are not ready to listen and support in fact ukiambia yeah. mtu kitu anafanya ana anaanza kukuchekelea ama ataambia ama ataambia yeah. mwingine ah yeah. huyu umeona filo anaenda hivi yeah. au anto anapitia yeah. hivi yeah. so inapitia inafanya paka we mwenye hata you can't even share yeah. so i felt that uh, I, i i i i have a room where by our this men can come out and yeah. sh- and have someone ready to listen to them wow mtu wako tayari to listen to muskiza and to support and to work with them throughout the journey. Awesome. Thank yes. you so much. And thank you so much guys for coming on the show today. Your story has it's it's really caught fire on social media and a lot of people are talking about it and I know you guys are going to go later and check the feedback. It's um it's very humbling after everything you've gone through that you're able to sit here and without bitterness uh, have so much resilience and so much to look forward to. <sighs> that is um Dan Sheshie and uh, and Philip Ogola. Dan is 
an acid burn survivor. And I know that you guys have said that we have closed the funds appeal for now, yeah? Yes. We've actually closed the funds appeal because you guys really did come through. And Philip, I really hope that God blesses you as you continue to stand with people like Dan and, 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 and even in future, more people. So, yeah, up next, we're also going to have someone who her story is quite interesting and, and quite transformative. I'm talking about the one and only Wahoo. Yeah, her husband is nameless. <laughs> the husband doesn't have a name. I, I don't know. <laughs> Why would you be married to someone who doesn't have a name? Because her husband is nameless. But before we get into that interview, how about DJ Blessing blesses us with the tunes of the one and only Wahoo? Wahoo.